Welcome to Living Well with April and Shelly, where we're raising kids, eating right, spending smart, and living well. Hi, I'm April Martin. I'm an Extension Agent with the University of Tennessee in DeKalb County. And I'm Shelly Barnes, an Extension Agent with the University of Tennessee Extension in Wilson County. So it is summertime, Shelly, and I know in my office I'm getting a lot of phone calls about canning. Everybody's got their crops are starting to come in and they're starting to think about canning. How about you? I'd say that's happening in every office across the state. It's definitely happening in Wilson County. Yes, so I know one of the most common questions I'm getting is what's the difference between water bath canning and pressure canning? And that's a good question. We get that all the time. The water bath canning is really designed for high acid foods. Pressure canning is designed for low acid foods. Would you like to tell us a little bit more about the pressure canner? Absolutely. So a pressure canner is something that you're going to have to use, as Shelly said, for low acid foods. And that's going to be meats. That's going to be any vegetable except for tomatoes. Tomatoes are a high acid food, so you can can those actually in the water bath canner. But all other vegetables or any combination of vegetables, for example, if you were going to do a soup or something, you have to do in a pressure canner. The reason for that is because a pressure canner reaches a certain uh, pressure to, to kill those microorganisms in your food and prevent food poisoning. The water bath canner does not reach that high of a pressure. It's a, like a big stock pot. Yeah, right? and that's definitely what I do when I'm gonna do some water bath canning at my house uh, because the eyes on my stove are definitely gonna be much smaller than this. And we recommend that if it's smaller than three inches, um, if your eye on your stove is smaller than three inches, um, of the pot then we recommend to use a pot that's smaller and so I just use a regular stock pot making sure that we have some type of barrier in between the cannon jar and the bottom of the pot to make sure that they're not gonna you know mm -hmm. have the glass right yeah, there and they're, they've pitch. actually got something out in stores now that you can use if you don't have um, the, the rack on the bottom of, of the water bath canner that you can actually substitute for um, you know your stock pot or something so um, there's two types of, of pressure canners. This one has a weighted gauge and it has these different rings on it. And you just take these off, just depending on how many pounds of pressure you're supposed to have. The other option is a pressure canner that has a dial gauge and you just have to wait until the pressure reaches the, the right uh, pounds of pressure according to what your um, recipe says to reach it to. So two different types of pressure canners. So Shelly, let's talk about some other equipment that you're going to need if you're going to can. One thing that you want to, first, of course you're going to have to have is your canning jars. And these are some just some examples. We've got one here that's a wide mouth um, and then one that's a half pint um, that's just like a regular mouth on it. You do want to make sure that you use jars that are for the purpose of canning. Not mayonnaise jars, not peanut butter jars. Um, those are have not been... Um, those have not been made to be able to withstand heat over and over mm -hmm. and reusing the canning jars. So it's the first thing you want to make sure that you've got. And with each of those jars uh, normally comes a lid that has a little rubber seal to it and then a screw band. And you will need brand new lids each time that you can. You don't want to open up an old jar um, that's had something else in it, wash it and reuse that lid. So make sure these are brand new lids. Now the screw bands, you can reuse these over and over. Just You don't want like rusty, um, if it's rusted, throw it away. But otherwise, the screw bands can be used over and over again. And that's a question that we get quite a bit, April, um, is asking about those two-part lids. And that's something that we, in Tennessee Extension, we're very clear on is that that's really all that we can recommend based on the research. Exactly. So some of our other things that we recommend you have it is a canning funnel. Uh, this just has a water mouth so that you can ladle your food into the canning jars. And we can show you how they fit on just like that. So super easy. We also have a bubble freer. And this is also really good to move, uh, move the food around after you got the jar filled and make sure that any bubbles that are down here at the bottom will rise up to the top. 
And then on the other end, and I love this tool, it's a measuring device so that it can help you determine how much food you have in there so that you can make sure that you have the correct headspace. The headspace um, and, all, and the pounds of pressure or the canning time, all of those are found in a tested recipe, which April will talk about later. Also, I really love this. This is just a lid lifter. So when we have these lids in our little pot water. simmering, mm -hmm. we can lift these lids right out of the water without getting our hands burnt. That's one of my favorite devices. That way I don't get burned when I stick my hand in the hot water. That's right. So. And April, we did talk about this a little bit earlier, but we can use just a regular stock pot for water bath canning only, not for pressure canning. And then they have made these new silicone canning racks so they can just go right in to make sure that we have a barrier in between the jar and the bottom of the pot. Yeah, and you do want to make sure that you've got a lid. So if it's a stock pot, you just want, you are going to have to have a lid to process it. But otherwise, it's you know it's really neat that you don't have to go out to the store to buy a special water bath canner if you, mm -hmm. if you don't want to. And you can use your lid, or you can use aluminum foil, just anything that's going to cover that pot up. Mm -hmm. Also, we want to really stress that you use tested recipes when you're canning. We can't stress this enough. I know uh, now with the internet, we've got gobs and gobs of recipes online, or you may even have recipes that handed down from your great-grandmother and that sort of thing. We really can't recommend any recipes unless they've been tested. Um, so it's always good to make sure that it's a current, more, you know, more recent publication from the Extension Service, Cooperative Extension, um, what are some other really good sources for recipes, Jill? The National Center for Home Food Preservation, which is obviously um, an extension uh, group that works in Georgia. Um, that's information that gets out to all extension agents across the nation. Um, and then also we have a book from Tennessee Extension here um, called Canning Foods. We also have publications on freezing foods. Um, and we have information at the office about dehydration as well. And this booklet, um, you can download this. It's called Canning Foods. It's from the UT Extension. It's publication number 724. We'll put the link to that in the comments and it's a free download. Mm -hmm. um, we sometimes have them in the office. I know we're running a little bit low on them right now, but it's free to download. I think something else that we'll put in the comments, April, is going to be information about our Extension Explorers team. That is a unique team that we have in the central region, which is the middle part of Tennessee. And we have been working since the pandemic to provide extensive extension-related canning um, and food preservation resources. And so that's very exciting. We'll make sure that you have the link and you can go there for all your canning needs. And that's a webinar type of series, so you don't have to show up in person for a canning class, but it will just give you some really good information. And we still got the video, all the videos posted from when we did have done this the last couple mm -hmm. of years, so if you want to go back and replay those, and even we even have canning demonstrations on each of the webinars as well. Um, coming up here in the Cap County, we'll post this on in the comments as well. Is uh, I, I am going to have a series of canning classes here in the Cap County at the county complex. And those are going to be in the month of June and July. We're going to be doing everything from jams, jellies, bread and butter pickles, um, salsa. So pretty much anything that you want to do. We will have some, some classes in the daytime, some in the night, and even one or two that are on a Saturday. That's exciting. And we also have a summer series from our Extension Explorers team. These are going to be in June, July, and August. More information can definitely be found in the comments below. But our June topic is going to be brewing beer at home. Our July, July topic is long-term food storage, and our August talk, topic is curing meat. So we're getting some in-depth information related to these programs. Well, we hope that this has been really informative today. This is just getting started and uh, some of the basics of canning. There's a lot more information, as I said, that you can download out in the Canning Foods publication. Um, and a lot more things. Come to a canning class if you've never canned before and want to learn how, or maybe you've done it for years and you just want to be with a fun group. It's a lot of fun to do that. But feel free to call your local UT or TSU Extension Agent office and any questions that you've got, we can answer. And that reminds me of something else, Shelly. I know um, in the summer we always recommend for people to get their pressure canners tested 
What can you tell us about that? Yeah, and so that's a service that's provided by most extension offices. I know um, in the central region we have a few vacancies, and so we have extension response teams all across the state who are ready and willing to make sure that everybody gets their pressure canner tested. Um, it's just a quick visit to the extension office. In some cases, the extension agent can meet you where you are. Um, it just depends on that person and their flexibility. But we need to make sure that if we have a pressure canner and we're using it, that we get that pressure canner gauge tested every single year. We want to make sure that we're doing everything the right way and the safe way. And that's for the dial gauges. It is for the dial gauges. So we gauge. do have the weighted gauges, it's little weights. You don't have to get those tested every year because weight is never going to change. But the dial gauge can change over time and you don't want that to fluctuate too much or it could, you know, have it be a food safety issue. So the, the dial gauge is the one that you need to get checked and, and most offices have a tester. We do here in DeKalb County. And so we do in Wilson. Feel free to call. We'll put our contact information down below and you can call um, either Shelley in Wilson County or April in DeKalb County. Well, I think that's about all the time we have for today. Don't forget to like us down there just so you'll get more of the great comments. Subscribe. Oh, oh, oh.